Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at nuclear fission. So let's get started. Now you should remember nuclear fission from the National 5 Physics radiation topic, but we'll recap it here as well because it does crop up in the higher course again. So let's remind ourselves of what nuclear fission actually is. Nuclear fission is the process in which an unstable, heavy atomic nucleus splits into two or more lighter nuclei called fission fragments with energy being released. And notice how it's the splitting of a nucleus here, not the splitting of an atom. So don't say splitting of the atom in your exam. And there are two types of nuclear fission, spontaneous and induced. So what is spontaneous fission first of all? Well, the word spontaneous suggests that something happens randomly and that is the case here. So it says that spontaneous fission occurs when the nucleus randomly decays. So here we have a nucleus which might undergo a random decay to split into two fission products and some neutrons. So we would call this the parent nucleus and these two the daughter nuclei. And an example would be shown by this reaction here, where we've got plutonium-239 undergoing a spontaneous fission to produce palladium-112, cadmium-124 and three neutrons. So here we've got our parent nucleus, two daughter nuclei plus three neutrons being released. So this could be our plutonium here, our palladium, our cadmium and then our three neutrons. And another way to tell that this is spontaneous and not induced is that you've not got anything causing the reaction to happen on this left hand side. So if we had a neutron on this left hand side of the reaction causing this plutonium nucleus to split, then that would be an induced fission reaction. Whereas here we've got nothing next to the plutonium on the left hand side, so it must be a spontaneous fission reaction. And another hint telling us that it's a fission reaction is that three neutrons are released. The other type of nuclear fission is called induced fission. And we say that induced fission occurs when the nucleus is bombarded by a neutron, causing it to split. So this word induced suggests that we are causing something to happen. We're causing the fission to happen, i.e. the splitting of the nucleus. And we can do that using a neutron. So in the picture here, you'll see that a neutron is coming in towards the target nucleus on the left hand side. And then the nucleus is splitting into the two fission products plus the neutrons just like before. So the difference between this induced nuclear fission and the spontaneous fission from before is that we've got this neutron neutron incident on this nucleus here causing it to split. And I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this induced nuclear fission. So you'll see we've got our target nucleus here plus our neutron on the left hand side. And if we click play you'll see the neutron hits into the nucleus causing it to split into two lighter fission fragments and three neutrons were produced. And I'll just show you that again. And we can look at this in terms of a nuclear equation. So for example, uranium-235 is bombarded by a neutron, causing it to undergo induced fission, in which rubidium-90, cesium-143 and three neutrons are produced. So here we know it's induced fission because we've got the uranium plus a neutron on the left hand side, which is what we didn't have for the spontaneous fission. And you'll see then we've got our three neutrons, which again is an indicator of fission taking place. And we've got our two fission fragments there. Lastly, it says to note that since there will be a small difference in mass between the left and right hand sides of our nuclear fission equation, energy is released in both spontaneous and induced fission, but it's often not included in the nuclear equation. So remember it's the energy released in nuclear fission reactions that can go on and heat up water to produce steam, which can drive turbines and then an electrical generator to produce electricity. So it's really the energy that is produced from these reactions that is important. Now you might be expected to carry out calculations to calculate the energy released in a nuclear fission reaction, and we'll do that in the worked example video for nuclear fission. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.